Here's another um, uh, image from a study um, by Claudio Fernandez and Dr. Davis and other scientists from Brazil who do, uh, with supercomputers, modeling of the absorption into the body and brain. And children absorb uh, cell phone radiation and wireless radiation deeper into their bodies compared to adults. This has been, several studies have been published on this. It's well known. Um, and here you can see a six-year-old and a 34-year-old with a cell phone to the head. These are computer models that use um, uh, an understanding of all the tissues that they were looking at, from the eyes to the skin. And the yellow, as I said before, is the highest rate of absorption. And the, then it goes orange, red, purple, blue. This paper, um, as well, was the first paper, it was published in 2018, to look at virtual reality. I don't know if you've seen the cardboard apparatus. You put the cell phone in it, and you hold it up to your eyes. Now, no one could have imagined we would be putting cell phones up to our eyes 20 years ago when we set these limits, but that is what they are doing in schools. And this is scientific imaging as well, looking at the uh, penetration with a slice of the head into the brain, with the highest exposures being to the eyes, which is, um, uh, which is uh, I almost have no words to <laughs> say what I think about that, but that, what, what will be the impact of long-term use? What's even the impact of using this a few times? Um, there has been no research to look at the long-term impact, especially to children's developing eyes, which have not yet developed the same protections as adult eyes. And there's an image there from a classroom of children who are all using the virtual reality uh, to go on a virtual field trip. Um, this was a free thing that Google was doing, giving this free to schools. They had a bunch of cell phones, a bunch of these cardboard apparatuses, and schools around the country were or taking these field trips. And here is an advertisement by Fios with a young child, and I don't see a cord. So I imagine this is wireless. There was also a recent study published, and there are a lot of studies. I'm not going to get a chance to go into all of them. But this was recent from the Swiss, Swiss Tropical Public Health Institute, which looked at teenagers, hundreds of teenagers, and found that there was impacts to memory after one year of cell phone use for those teenagers that put the phone to the head. Now, I know that people say to me, oh, people don't really put their phone to their head anymore. But I beg to differ, and I think that teenage girls use phones to the head. I know that. I'm the mother of, of teenage teenagers, although we use a corded phone at home. But um, think of all the business folks um, workers in, in various occupations who are using cell phones all the time. I'm getting work on my house done. The contractors, they are on the phone 24-7, sleeping with the phone. I'll also note that the study noted um, that disturbed sleep negatively affects memory consolidation and that you know, pointing out that, there, that perhaps this is a way that happens. I know that it is shown in several studies that the sleep EEG is affected by radio frequency radiation exposure, except what you'll hear and what I heard in one conference um, by folks who, uh, scientists who say that there's no reason to change the limits is that that doesn't mean that there's an impact on sleep and we need to do the studies on sleep to show, we have to do that kind of research to show that until we can say that that actually is actually a health effect. I'd also encourage you to watch um, Dr. Deborah Davis's TED Talk. It's rapid fire with the brain and sperm share and why care. And it is about the impacts to the most rapidly growing parts of our bodies, our reproductive organs, sperm, and the brain. That's online. Most people don't know, and certainly I didn't know before I got involved in this issue, that every cell phone and 
all wireless devices have information about radio frequency radiation. And most of them say that you need to keep it a distance from your body, or they say they're tested at a distance from the body. And in a funny way, they sort of say that you might exceed limits if you don't use it in the way that it's supposed to be used, which is in the, the way that it's tested. So that image of the head, they actually have um, ensure with uh, the spacer, I'm going to go more into this on the panel as to how phones are tested, but there is a space between the head and the phone, especially with the body. I didn't show you an image of the body, but it looks like kind of like a tiny little pool, which is replicating the body, and they take the phone, and they have a little spacer that goes there so that there is a distance um, under an inch, 10 millimeters, might be 25 millimeters. There are other devices which are tested, like the decked foam base, or your Wi-Fi router, or um, a gaming console. Those are tested at 20 centimeters from the measurement device. And the, so that what that means is that you can exceed the limits if you're not following this distance, if you're not keeping that distance. Um, and I'll just read what uh, the, the Samsung laptop, and this is actually from, from mine, keep safe distance from pregnant women's stomach or from lower stomach of teenagers to ensure compliance with RF exposure guidelines, the notebook PC must be used with a minimum of 20.8 centimeter antenna separation from the body. That's about eight inches. Now, that, I haven't seen that language recently. In fact, a lot of websites have been scrubbed a little bit. And maybe I'll talk about that on the panel because I didn't have time to put it in here today. Something that's um, just coming out now, although scientists have known it's been published, I know Deborah Davis has been talking about this for years, is that when you take a cell phone and you test it at body contact, like maybe, you know, um, in your bra, like a lot of women do, or uh, tucked in your spandex pants, as I see a lot of teenagers doing uh, when they do exercise class, that when tested in those positions, they exceed our government limits. And in fact, the government of France recently uh, was forced to release all the tests they had done, hundreds of cell phone tests, that showed that they're, they exceeded the uh, European limits for cell phone radiation when tested in zero millimeter positions, meaning with no spacer between the phone and the body phantom of the, of the testing system. And you can go online and read about PhoneGate to learn more about that. Now, wireless companies warn their shareholders of the risk, but they don't tell their customers or residents who are living where they're about to put a cell tower or a small cell. And I'd like to read what Crown Castle says. If, re if frequency emissions from wireless handsets or equipment on our communications infrastructure, meaning the antenna and the small cells or the towers, are demonstrated to cause negative health effects, potential future claims could adversely affect our operations costs or revenues. We currently do not maintain any significant insurance with respect to these matters. I won't read Verizon's except to say you can go online on Environmental Health Trust and we have listed a lot of the carriers and we link to their annual reports where they inform their shareholders about this risk. And I'll note, there's no insurance for these companies because uh, mobile insurance companies have refused to cover mobile operators for years now because of the risk being so high. And there were brain cancer cases and lawsuits that were initiated about 20 years ago. Um, actually, it's longer than that now. Oh my gosh, it's 2019, so over 20 years ago. And at that time, insurer said, you know what? I don't, you know, this could be like, this could be a lot of money. <laughs> um, so just to read you what the Lloyds of London, they, there's a lot of white papers. And in their report in 2010, they say the danger with EMF 
electromagnetic fields, is that like asbestos, the exposure insurer's face is underestimated and could grow exponentially and be with us for many years. We also have a page dedicated to these white papers that includes the Swiss Re reports that rank the unforeseen consequences of EMFs um, to the insurance industry as high. And there are two things I want to say. One is that electromagnetic fields are defined as a pollutant by insurance com companies when you buy policies many, many times. And it is a general standard that insurance companies exclude coverage for harm from electromagnetic fields. So this is AT&T insurance you can buy for your phone, you can go online to find this, and it defines, it says they exclude pollutants. And it defines pollutants, any solid liquid gaseous or thermal irritant or contaminant, including smoke vapor, soot, fumes, acid, um, alkalis, chemicals, artificially produced electric field, magnetic field, electromagnetic field, sound waves, microwaves, and all artificially produced ionizing or non-ionizing radiation and waste. And here is a, an example of an electromagnetic field exclusion policy for the city of Ann Arbor municipality. And in it, they exclude damages. This is very common. We have, them, we have a number of them online, so you can see them. You can ask your insurance carriers. What they've done, which is really interesting, is not only do they exclude if someone gets hurt and decides to sue, but also, um, any supervision, damages that might come, they won't defend. If you, need, if you instructed, recommended, gave warning advice, or didn't give advice given or what should have been given in connection with A or B above, meaning electromagnetic radiation or that you might be harmed by it. I think that says a lot. <laughs> 